be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Do you guys believe that today? Yes. That's great. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. He is worthy to be praised. Yes. Amen. If I could get my ushers to come forward, please. We're going to go ahead and take this time to, to worship in our tithes and offerings. And we're going to pray over the offering. If I can get you guys to come forward. Thank you. I want to welcome everybody here today. Welcome those online at Golden City. And uh, anybody that is online joining us, if you guys would feel free to go ahead and type your name in. We want to know kind of who's connecting with us, and, and we welcome you guys. If you'll read your bulletins, there's some big announcements, big things coming up in Carthage. And, and uh, July 3rd is a, a big day, something that has been building for a few years now. And so we're excited about that. And, and uh, so let's just go ahead and pray. During our worship time, there's going to be altar teams up at the front. These altars are open. If you need prayer for anything, uh, it's a safe place to come and, and uh, be prayed over or uh, just in a, a prayer of agreement for something maybe. And then at the same time, I welcome you guys to worship however you want. If you feel comfortable sitting, it's fine to sit. If you feel comfortable standing, well, you are welcome to stand. Just whatever you guys feel comfortable doing, we want you guys to feel welcome here. And I'm glad you guys are here. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the freedom we have to be here today. I thank you that your presence is here. You are worthy of our praise. And we praise you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I ask that you be with the, the cheerful giver today. I ask that you be with all of us as we take this time to honor you in, in our tithes and our offering. And I ask that you help this church body to be good stewards of what is given. And we thank you for the abundance that comes from you. And we know that you are the one who supplies all of our needs. And so we thank you for that. I ask that you bless the cheerful forgiver today. Thank you so much for your presence here. We ask that you be with us during our, this time of worship. I ask that you be with the message today and, and be with Pastor Kent. And he's delivered this message and the strength that you give him. I thank you for the boldness and let it be your words. And I praise you, Father God. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When the enemy surrounds 
and my heart grows faint within when the darkness overwhelms and my fears are pressing in i will trust in you O lord in the silence i will wait i will stand upon your word you're my solid rock and my salvation my steadfast hope that won't be shaken my soul will wait my soul will wait for you when the enemy surrounds and my heart grows faint within when the darkness overwhelms and my fears are passing in I will trust in you, O Lord, in the silence I will wait. I will stand upon your word. You're my solid rock and my salvation, my steadfast hope that won't be shaken. My soul will wait, my soul will wait for you. You're my stronghold and my shield In the midst of every threat Though the wicked never yield They will vanish like a breath Yes, I know the outcome sure Satan's evil plans will fail In your power I'm secure You're my solid rock and my salvation, my steadfast hope that won't be shaken. My soul will wait, my soul will wait for you. You're my comfort when I feel forsaken, my refuge and my sure foundation. My soul will wait, my soul will wait for you. This is love I can't explain. This is mercy unreserved. Through your sacrifice so great, I have peace that's undeserved. For the battle has been won, and I fear no shame or loss. Now the sting of death is gone. You're my solid rock and my salvation, my steadfast hope that won't be shaken. My soul will wait, my soul will wait for you. You're my comfort when I feel forsaken, my refuge and my sure foundation. My soul will wait, my soul will wait for you.
If I call, will you come? When I cry, do you hear? I believe every tear is caught up by a faithful God. So I will cry until you come. Cast my cares into your arms. I can't see past this storm, but I'm counting on a faithful God. Faithful God, you hold my life secure, and all my days are Trusting in a faithful God. So I will praise him to appear. Set my foot upon this shore. I declare. I declare that every foe is subject to my faith. Father, we just come to you and we just thank you so much for your presence here. Thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your faithfulness. 
And Lord, that you, in you, Lord, we put our trust because you are trustworthy. Father, things don't always add up or make sense. Lord, we are, we are limited in our understanding and we trust you because you know all things. You hold all things together. <clears throat> Excuse me. You hold all things together by the word of your power. You're sovereign over all. You're omniscient, omnipresent, almighty. There's not a second place to you. Father, we give you praise because you're worthy. We put our trust in you because you're worthy. We put our faith in you because you're faithful. Father, we trust you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. You may be seated. Karen, can you go to my bag and get my glasses out, please? The contacts are all over the place today. I tell you, that song is awesome. How many believe here today? Do you believe? Let's give the Lord praise and tell him we believe in the house today. I tell you. Uh, I'm breaking every protocol right now by digging on this, but it's somewhere up on my eye. But, but anyway, uh, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. I'm going to turn around just a second. I'm going to really grow some people out here. So anyhow, the, that song's, uh, Joel, uh, you guys hit it right on the head. That song you opened with today, that's a song I was wanting to hear, and I believe the Lord said we needed to sing Rejoice. And I don't know where Joe got to, but that blessed my heart today. The other thing the Lord put on my heart today was that we'd have a guest, and they're here. And I'm going to turn around again. So I did this before, and I found out I grossed out half the church, so I didn't want to do it in front of you. But welcome, Alice. For This is Alice Fowler. She's our district superintendent. And welcome for being here today. Bless Thanks. you. And get you some contact solution on you. But uh, awesome day today. Um, I'm just going to jump right in today. And anyway, I've got a lot on my mind. And anyway, I think the enemy doesn't want me to say what I'm going to say today. And so I'm just going to get going and get it said. So he gets put in his place, as we say. But let's read from Matthew 6, 15 through 14. And I'm from the ESV today. I think I've got it fixed, but we will see. Matthew 6, 5 through 14. Uh, if you guys are, when you came in, you should have got a 3 by 5 card. If you're not following us uh, on the Oakland Church app, if you're following us on the Oakland Church app, you can just follow the church app. But I've got want some participation today that you guys can be involved in. But on your cards, you can write down some points we're going to have today. And then on the other side is how you respond to those points. And anyway, I want to let you know that ahead of time. But again, that'll be on the Oakton app. And again, I want to welcome everybody that's here online and those at Golden City and those that are in the house today. It's a great day. So Matthew 6, 5 through 14. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep up empty phrases, or do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgotten our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you have forgiven others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And, and remember that today. I, I didn't chase that, but in prayer this morning, the Lord's really putting that on my heart. That There's a lot of people carrying around unforgiveness in their heart, and they need to, to get rid of that. Uh, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, uh, I, uh, for they uh, disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but your, by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for your presence that's in this house. Father, we thank you that, that when we believe, Father, that you will just move mountains in our life. Father, we know that when our belief and our faith is pulling together, Lord, you said it yourself, a faith of a mustard seed would, would move a mountain. And so, Father, we thank you that, that we do believe in you. We believe in your word. And, Lord, we believe today that you can touch many lives in this room. Uh, if people need and saved today, Lord, we believe that they can be saved in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, uh, we've prayed them in. And, Father, uh, I know they can receive today. And, Father, those that may be away from you, Lord, they can be brought back home and be moved upon today. And so, Lord, we just thank you today that, that when we believe, Lord, you will move in our life. Father, that when we believe, you will touch our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for all you are. In Jesus' name, amen. I was really, the Lord's been putting on my heart. I actually had two or three sermons I was working on, but what the Lord's been putting on my heart is in the last day, the church is going to have to be operating in the supernatural, period. And, and the supernatural, uh, you know, we got into that we got to have, uh, we, we established we have faith at salvation, and Romans 12, 3 talks about that, but we talked about that we need to believe along with that. And we talked about how that when two horses are pulling together, faith and belief, they can move mountains. But when we allow unbelief in, the faith's still there, and we start working against our faith. And, and that's why the, the centurion said to the, Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so uh, we need to press into God and, and, and believe, but what better way to do it than pray? And the Lord put this simplicity on me today just pray. Uh, we need to be a praying people. And, and I ask the Lord, well, give me, you know, five things that you want us to pray or how you want us to pray because we can chase this all day for two months. And the Lord put on my heart, point one, I want you to write it down on the front side of this card, but pray to God. Pray to God. It's that simple. Pray to God. And, and anyway, uh, it reminded me of my daughter and my son, uh, we are on, I didn't bring my phone in with me, but, but every day, me and Karen get together and, hey, Karen, did Tammy or Joshua call you today? Did they text you today? Have you heard from them today? I'm always running up to Karen, you know, especially since Amy moved away and she's not around here anymore. I saw her every day and, and now I don't see her at all. And the Lord's putting on, you know, hey, Karen, have you heard from Amy? You see where I'm at today? It's the same way with the Lord. The Lord desires to hear from you. Pray to him. If the Lord desires to be a part of your life, pray to him. Go to him. He wants to be in every aspect of your life. Now, I think it's already spread, but my brother passed away last night at 1.50 in the morning. And Anyway, I was by his side, me and my little brother, and we had an awesome night together. And, and the Lord reemphasized that I want to be with you. I want you to pray to me and I want you to seek me. And that's why I started out with what I said today. That song, Rejoice, that, that we opened with today is what God was putting on my heart, Joe, and praise team. And that blesses me that, that when we're praying to God and he begins to speak things to us, it begins to build our faith. And that's another good reason to pray. But, but the other side of that 
is that, that again, I've had, I think, two hours of sleep, and I played, prayed for the Lord to give me a supernatural uh, uh, refreshing today so that I, because my mind, how you get your mind's kind of blah, 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 blah. Well, I walked in the church today, and I know Warren grabbed the church door, and I opened up the door, and I get stung right here. And if you can tell, uh, if I'm lisping today, ask Joe, I was swelled up all across this here. It's gone down about half as much as what it was. But my old lips swelled up. And I thought, Lord, <laughs> I prayed you'd wake me up, but not this way. <laughs> but then I remember John 10, 10, and that's again when we talked to the Lord. Uh, I, I said, Lord, this isn't the way I woke up, man. Uh, and the Lord spoke quickly, John 10, 10 to me. And Jesus comes that we may have life and more have, have it more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and the Lord talks to you. And I knew that coming from the enemy. Uh, if you know the truth, there's lots of things going on. And, and, but anyway, I don't want to get into that rabbit today. But, but the Lord wants us to pray to him. Why? Because he wants to intervene in our situation. He wants to push forward in our situation. And like me and Joel were praying, by his stripes we are healed. And I'm already seeing this. I'm believing by the end of the service that, that it'll be completely gone. I'm believing it's gone now. But it's back to the beginning. We've got to believe. And we need to believe in him. Well, we believe, but, but pray to him. Pray to God. And so, anyway, another thing that I want to talk about today is that you see it all through the Scripture when people uh, Pray to God the marvelous things that happen. We can talk about lion's den, Daniel in the lion's den. But I'm going to hit one today that, that, that Joshua 10, 13. And the sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to stop or to set for about a whole day. And so we always hear about that story that, that Israel was in war and they were, or were seeking God and God was leading them. And, they, and anyway, through prayer and these things, the sun was stopped. And the reason I, I wanted to share some big things today, but, but if God can stop, stop the sun, I'm finding out S's don't work for me, but, but if God can stop the sun, then he can intervene in anything. That's right. I was reading uh, uh, Cambridge researchers announced Monday, and this is, uh, I, don't, I didn't write the date down, but but they have pinpointed the date of the biblical count of Joshua stopping the sun. And, and even science proves that it happened. Science is saying that took place. God intervened. Do you not think he'll intervene to you in your life? Well, he will. And so I want you now to write down on the back of your card things that you need to say to God today, asking him to intervene in your life. So I'm saying, Lord, I've got a bee sting here. You know, that's on the back of my card. Lord, my brother went on to be with you. That's on my heart. Lord, I know he's good. I know he's safe. But, but Lord, I need you to intervene in that. And so we write down and allow God to touch our situations. And that's why I always stress in our life that we need to pray, read your word, journal, and listen to what God's telling you. And I believe if you do that five minutes a day, just a minimum of five minutes a day on each of them it would change your life right. and so the second thing is pray with passion and in any way that we need to pray with a passion meaning are we really into what we're praying are we really pressing into it and and i tried to film it and actually i got a little bit of it but i always talk about my dog drake but but i went out on the porch yesterday or whatever day it was and and, and when I go outside and trying to study and trying to seek God, if I, that, that dog comes and you already know the stories, he tracks me down. He finds me. I'm talking about miles. I'm talking about in town when I was golfing one day, Karen brought him in and he walked the course where I went to find me. Uh, but, but he come out this morning and I'm trying to, to type in and, and the Lord's really speaking to me and he's bumping my arm with his head and he won't quit bumping me like this until I put my hand on him and start paying, or petting him. Uh, he'll even grab your head with his teeth in his mouth. He won't bite you and pull it down to pet him. We need to be that aggressive in our prayers. We need to be that passionate to have the Lord move in our life, that passionate about prayer and, and saying, God, I need you 
to touch my situation and, and go to him, nudge on him, uh, uh, expect him to move, uh, uh, keep nudging on him until he does move. But guys, he's moving all the time, but, but press into him. I wanted to read from Acts chapter 11 today, and again, because of situations and things that the Scripture will be behind me, and you guys can follow along. We'll be in Acts 11 and 12. But, but the passionate prayer uh, can win cities. And, and that's what we're about, you know. Uh, we're not going to live forever. And, and we're here to determine, oh, but back up, we are going to live forever, but not here. And we got a choice to make. And my point in all that is, is that we're here to determine where we spend eternity, and it's our choice. It's our, 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 our idea. But once we recognize that and press into that, then we should have that same passion that Christ had for us to pray and lead others to Christ. And we see that passion here in Barnabas in, in Acts chapter 11. And Barnabas, uh, he was passionate about winning souls, but he couldn't be as passionate about winning souls unless he was connecting with God. And so that tells me he was passionate about prayer. Now, I want to let you know that Antioch is a lot like America today. Uh, this city was very wealthy. It was in the Far East. It was known for buildings, cultures, for being morally uh, corrupt, uh, just a lot of things like that. And I throw all this at you, but it reminds me of, of maybe New York when all these things we go to see and things we want to do in the culture, or you go to New Orleans and, and you see the beauty of New Orleans and the culture that's there. Uh, we had have, have some great things going on, but, but there's a lot of corruption in these cities. Uh, and, and I see that as America today. America is a great nation, and, and we're very wealthy and prosperous culturally, uh, great nation, but we still needed God to move in our life. And, and Barnabas began to pray about this. And, and anyway, you can read in the scripture here, but in verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was, was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. And so the report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they set Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted and I put pray for here, them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he who is a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. So we see here lots of information here. We see that, that, that God was on a Barnabas and God was touching his life and wanting to move in his life and he was pressing into God, but realize it took a year for this to be accomplished. That this was going on for a year and, and we need to be passionate about prayer until we see the end result of prayer. If God's called us to win Roger to the Lord, then I'm passionate about prayer until Roger's saved and we know you are, so that prayer is answered, amen? Just kidding. But, but again, when God puts something on our heart and, and we know it's from the Lord, we are nudging at him and flipping him and pushing on him, wanting more of him until that's answered. And we see that with Barnabas here. And could you imagine that's where they were first called Christians? That's a huge thing. That's a huge honor that they were called Christians in Antioch because of the move of God that took place because of a man's passion for the Lord. Oakton, we need to have a passion for the Lord and pray. We need to have a passion for the people in our cities and pray. Uh, we can make a difference in these areas. It, it may take some time, but we can and will make a difference. We are making a difference, and many of you here today are because of that. But we need to continue to press into him. And as I said earlier, you know, my brother, I tell you, this just happened a month ago. Started running the temperature. Uh, he wasn't expecting this. He wasn't expecting it to come. We weren't expecting it to come. And boom, it happens. I was out in his garage last night, and, and, and he's got a, a new mower. He's got a new tiller. He's even got a new jack to lift up the mower. He, he's got a new purchased home. He wasn't planning on going anywhere. 
We're not living for now. We're living for eternity. And I'm not saying all those things are wrong. We need to, to live life. But we need to be prepared like he was. And, and, and he was ready to be with the Lord. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But I want you to write someone's name down you'll pray passionately for today. Someone that you'll exhort. Uh, uh, exhorting isn't saying you're going to hell in a can. Exhorting isn't saying your sin is, is horrible and, and God hates that and hates you. Well, it may be true that God hates the sin, but is that exhorting people? And so we need to be like Barnabas and exhort people that God's put on my heart. Man, I got some good spitting going on today too. But anyway, write someone's name down. You'll passionately exhort that you'll bring to church, that you'll bring in, uh, to the youth group or to the young adults or to Oakton Carthage. But point three, write her down. Pray together. Pray together. There is power in praying together. I want you to stay in Acts 12. And I'm going to make a point here. And you guys can go home and read Acts 12 later on today. But I want to keep moving today. But we see the church was turned upside down. Herod had just killed James. Peter was in prison facing execution the same way. And Herod laid violent hands on the church. Now you can find that all in the passage behind me. Pretty big deal, isn't it? Where I want to encourage you in today is the church may not have had any hope. You know, the world may not have hope. You may not have hope here today, but when you pray passionately to the Lord and you pray to the Lord and then you turn in and bring brothers and sisters into the situation and you pray earnestly because that's what the church did in verse 5. When, when the church lost hope, they earnestly joined, or excuse me, they, they joined together in prayer and many people gathered and were praying in verse 12, which won't be behind me there. And so we see the church, when the enemy attacked, they prayed. When the enemy attacked me today through the bee sting, we prayed. Uh, lots of people prayed, and look how it's already going down even more. I remember Mark, we was out in Hayfield, Jason over there behind Jade's house where you guys live now, and, and Mark got stung. And anyway, I'll never forget it. He'd come up, and his eyes were swelled shut, and he couldn't see, and we had to take him to the hospital. But we got around him and prayed as children. And we prayed together as a family. And, and we need to pray together as a church. We see as this goes on, that you read the chapter there, Peter was uh, a move of God what took place in his life. And Peter even calls it an angel, but you can read about it in Acts 12, 6 through 9. But, but there's this angel that came in, and Peter called it a great vision, but I believe he was taken up in the Spirit. And I've been there a few times where you're taken up in the Spirit, and time just goes by. Uh, I can remember one time when I went to the altar, and, and people began to pray for me. It was eight hours later. And, and, and people don't believe me when I say that, but it just seemed like it was that quick. But Peter was caught up in this vision, if you will. And, and again, we know that he was bound. Uh, he had lots of guards on him. Uh, I think they said six centurions, but he's bound in the ankles. He's bound in the arms. And the angel come in and he broke, the, broke him free, set him free, took him through the guard gates, took him by the guards unnoticed. Again, I was caught up until I got outside and I realized it was real. Powerful powerful when the church had no hope oh lord let's pray lord by the way help my unbelief i believe but, but help but they prayed and, and we see a mighty move of god took place the other side that really touched me on this is that when they went to rhoda's house or the the praying church's house and rhoda come to the door and she saw peter you know what she did she slammed the door that's what they're praying for, and Peter shows up the door. So many times we're praying for something, God moves, and we slam the door because we just can't comprehend it. It was so supernatural. But we need to believe for the supernatural. And anyway, 
the reason I know he slammed the door, a lot of you said, that's not biblical, Pastor. It doesn't say he slammed the door. Well, to say that he knocked on the door after that because she slammed the door and he started knocking on it again. And they thought it was his angel. They thought of all these things that it could have been until they recognized and accepted that Peter had been set free. And we need to press in. What I'm trying to tell you today is, is we're human just like Peter. And help my unbelief, but we continue to pray. We continue to press in. And God is faithful, just like he was in this story. But what really blessed me about this story, we again, in the beginning, we see that James was, had been executed. We see that Peter is in to be executed. And the church has been tormented, the Christians. At the end of this chapter... We see what? Peter set free. We see the church was rejoicing and people were being saved daily. And you look at the end of it and it said that Herod was dead. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Pretty big turn of events. All because of some people that were working out their faith with fear and trembling did some praying. And we need to do some praying as a church. I may not be able to get through this one today, but but uh, Joe, if you want to come up here, and Dixon, you can help him. Why don't you do that today? <sighs> this is a neat story here. And I call the... This is what the Lord put on my heart, and I call it the, the praying brothers. But, but we see in Exodus 17, 11, and 12, I believe. But again, Israel's at war, and, and we know the story that whenever Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek prevailed, the enemy but Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and on the other, the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And that's a, an act of prayer here you see today. In other words, uh, we're going through a hard time as a family. Actually, when the Lord gave me this, uh, Mark was still alive, and and I went up to Kansas City, and, and this was on my heart. And anyway, my sister-in-law come in, and or she was already in there, and she said, you know, we need to let the, the brothers talk. And we always pray together, me and Mark and Brian, and I mean, clear back to the bee sting I was telling you about earlier. And we've always prayed together, and, and, and I remember coming back for another time from Bible college at that me and Brian were at Bible college together, and we came back, and we met Mark at 1003 in town at the house 1003. And, and anyway, after our wrestling match, we always like to wrestle too, but after a wrestling match, that's kind of our greeting, uh, we went in the house and, and had prayer. And Mark shared some intimate things with me and, and things that, that happened in his life that, and asked me about it, and I shared with him, and, and Brian shared, and we prayed. And that's kind of what happened was happening in Kansas City, and I was wanting that because we're brothers, you know, and we hold each other up. Sorry, I'm not trying to use this today. The Lord told me to do this. I'm not trying to play on emotions because emotions are temporary, face eternal. But but anyway. Uh, we got to talk. Man, he gave me a list of 15 things that he wanted me to work on for him. And, and anyway, uh, just some awesome things. And we just had a brother time of praying. And we, we hung together and prayed and prayed by his stripes. He is healed. And he is today. He is. We, we get caught up in that, that we're going to live this life forever and we think this life's better than the life to come we're crazy uh, but he's ultimately healed now but but anyway we were I was thinking about this but 
But I saw this story come to place. My brother had gotten tired and he needed to sit down. We come in around him, prayed, and we had to move God. And and I'm not crying up here because I'm sad. I, I mean, I'm upset or anything like that. I'm crying because I'm going to miss my brother. But but I'm crying also that that was spirit filled times. Uh, the, the presence of God was there, and, and they were just good times. But I'm also crying because I know that's the way it's going to be for eternity, that we're going to be in the presence of God, just enjoying each other. And, but, but again, I, I, I said, we need to hold Mark's hands up. And so, you know, again, we need to hold each other's hands up when I'm tired. You notice they brought in a chair and let them sit down. And then they hold up their arms because when we're praying and staying together, we will prevail. But when we fight against it and listen to the enemy and said, God made that bee sting you, that's listening to the enemy. We got to look at the word and say, God wouldn't do that to me. And we got to recognize it. And then the enemy's coming after me through that. So we prayed and we're holding each other up. And today, we need to learn as a church body to hold each other up. And this is just an example. I don't want sympathy. Uh, I, I'm not playing on sympathy today. I want us to get a hold of that, that our prayers together make a difference. That's right. And we need to start holding each other up. Yes. And that's a supernatural thing that will change lives in this area when they see us holding each other up. If Joe's talking me down, he can't hold my hand up. He's not going to let me talk, but he's not going to let me use that. If Dixon's gossiping against me, he can't hold me up, can he? You see? We need to lift each other up. Encourage. If we're tearing each other down, that isn't lifting me up. He should have stayed home today and not preached. He's playing on my emotions. But anyway, thank you, brothers. I don't know that was fun. I got to flush my contacts a little bit more. But yeah, the, but we had this intimate time again yesterday and well, every day. Brian and the brothers would get around each other <laughs> and just have an awesome time together. And that's what I'm getting at in the worst of circumstances you can have Holy Ghost meetings and we did we did but hold my family up hold up Kenda and Whitney and Parker for sure and we believe and everything's going to be alright <clears throat> but, but where do you need God to intervene in your life that's the next question where do you need God to intervene in your life I want you to write it down. It may take a little time. It may take a little time. Remember Barnabas had worked there a year. But one that really blessed me when I was writing this and studying on this, I guess this would have been, I was updating it Thursday, or maybe been Friday, but Whatever day Roe versus Wade was overturned this week, man, I thought, now that's one that took 50 years. And, and we probably, we need to give the Lord praise for that, don't we? <laughs> what tickled me is the first thing that went through my mind, this happens under the, arguably, the most liberal president that we ever had and I can say that because I pray for him and I thought Lord why'd you do that and I know the Lord spoke to me <laughs> that he did this because people were earnestly praying and he was showing it didn't matter who was president he can change anything We need to earnestly pray.
developing our sixth sense. Have we got enough time? You guys want me to shut up yet? I haven't spit on you yet, so you're good. Um, the Lord really laid this on my heart, developing your sixth sense. That's point four. Developing your sixth sense. Number six. I'm having fun with the S's, but I'll be clear at the end for sure. But Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And guys, uh, there's five st- senses that we have. We have uh, sight, touch, smell, taste, hearing. Uh, when these senses feel, uh, fail us, then another one will pick us up. And my hearing, I've been praying for my hearing lately because it seems to be failing, uh, failing me a little bit. Karen thought it was just selective hearing, and it may be, it's, but, it's, uh, but anyway, uh, I've been praying for that, but my eyes, I've been looking, I look at lips more. My other senses are starting to pick up and help out, and, and that's the way our senses work. But Jesus talked about in the scripture today, and I believe he's talking about a sixth sense or referring to it, but he says in Matthew 6, 16, and, and when you fast... Uh, fasting isn't to gain favor with God. If I just go in and fast 10 days, look at me, God, what do you just talk about in the scripture? Don't be putting on a show. But I believe we fast so that, that we're fasting things that bother our senses, our fleshly senses, so that our faith will increase to say, hey, I can do this. So, for example, I like fasting food. When you fast food, it's tough because your flesh wants to eat. You're hungry. But with me, after three days, I'm good. And I think a lot of it is is because you realize that man doesn't live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hmm, scripture. And our faith gets stronger, and we say, hey, I don't depend on that. And so if we're fasting the TV that we think we cannot get rid of, that God's told us to clean up, you do it a day, you'll do it a second day, and then you'll realize that, hey, I really don't need Fox News. I mean, I may agree with everything they say, but or may not, but, but you don't depend on that. And your faith takes over. And we need to, the faith sense, the sixth sense, needs to take all over our lives as believers. And so we, we, I believe the Lord's really put it on my heart. If you're struggling with a sin, and I don't think I've ever heard this preached before, and I'm going to do it in front of our district superintendent. She may pull my license after today. No, I'm kidding. I hope I'm kidding. But, uh. Uh, but what if you were struggling with the sin of your eyes? Maybe you're lusting somebody at work and you're struggling with it. I would challenge you to say, God, I'm a believer and I don't need to be doing that and I'm going to make a point of not looking at this person anymore. That I don't need that. And that, what that does is put your faith in charge, and after a few days, you'll say, hey, I can get by that. I remember me chewing tobacco. I didn't believe that was a sin, basically, but, but the Lord said that it keeps you from doing preaching the way you want to preach because you'll shut up when you start talking about things because you're doing this. And so it's hard to quit. But the Lord spoke to me today, what if you are struggling with something the Lord's told you? You know, you need to get rid of that. Why don't you fast it for three days and see if the Lord won't intervene and your faith will grow strong? And next thing you know, hey, I can whip this. But the key is, is that you're praying and reading God's word in those things that you're fasting. And so... Is that as clear as mud? Uh, the, my computer's moved around. It's saying I've got 10 copies going on here, so I'm trying to figure that out. But maybe I don't need that today. 
but that faith is the sixth element that we need in our life as believers to operate in the supernatural and so let's develop that and let's work that through And the last thing is pray for wisdom. And the praise team, why don't you come on up? I don't, I've lost my notes. The old enemy don't want me to talk today. But uh, the last point, uh, before we go there, though, I was checking something out here, but before we go there, write down something that, and again, I don't want you to fast anything unless the Lord tells you to. And But maybe something that you could fast. Something that you could give to the Lord in your own life and and write that down in the piece of paper and and again um, pray about that because I don't want you doing anything for me and I'm just going to get rid of this it's not doing me any good anyway the last thing is pray for wisdom and you guys can go to First King chapter 3 I don't know that I put that up there but I didn't even finish my PowerPoint because all this happened. I didn't get done, I guess. But, but uh, pray for wisdom. And we all know the story. King Solomon, the Lord came to him and said, you can have anything you want. What do you want? And Solomon said, wisdom to govern your people, basically, or discernment to govern your people. Lord, I need to know how to live this life of faith. I need to know how to walk it out. And this is one of my scriptures that I stand on all the time because the more I grow in the Lord, the more that I know I need him and I depend on him. And so, Lord, give me your wisdom. Give me your discernment so that I can make the right decisions. Well, the Lord honored that with Solomon and, and, and even blessed him even more. Um, he said it pleased the Lord that, that he prayed for this. And so God gave him riches and expanded his territory and blessed him. And you guys all know the story. He was one of the most wise men ever. Uh, did great things but the covenant's the same with Jesus Matthew 6 33 says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will come in and happen and play I think we have, might do we not have that scripture up but but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will come into place and he will give you everything you need Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I think there's more gentlemen up there than ladies. But uh, thank you for that. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And that's what we're talking about today. Pray. Pray. I've uh, been hearing how wonderful uh, Landon did two weeks ago. been hearing how wonderful Maranatha did two weeks ago. My mother even told me, that you're going to have some big shoes to fill after they've been preaching. They did some good preaching. I said, thanks for the encouraging words, Mother. <laughs> and, and anyway, uh, but no, you guys did a bang-up job. But the testimonies that come forth from both of you, uh, you're able to testify about those because you were seeking the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and everything else came in that you needed. And, and you're having a baby because of it. Amen? As God touched your life. So let's stand to our feet. What do you have in your life that you need God to intervene in? And I, I, I love you guys and I cherish you, but this altar time's not for me, okay? I mean, I, I'll get my prayer time in, but I want you to look at your own heart today. And a lot of times when I share personal stuff with you, everybody wants to come pray for me. And that's awesome. I, I love your prayers. But the Lord gave me this word before Mark passed. And I just added some extra to it today. And so we need to look at our own life. Are you praying? Because if you want the supernatural in your life, then you need to go to God, pray. God wants to hear from you. He inhabits the praises of his people. Two, man, we need to pray passionately. Man, press into him. When you don't feel him, press in. And there's some times this week I, I was like, God, are you here? Press in. Press in. Passion. Maybe you got somebody, again, we wrote down there, somebody you could lead to Christ. Man, pray with passion. Pray with passion. 
and then again pray together. That's maybe why the Lord was talking to us about the forgiveness earlier. I told you that's been jumping out at me all week. We can't stand together and hold each other up if we have unforgiveness in our heart. Or we may not be 100% in our prayers. So if you got unforgiveness in here, we need to kick that out. Maybe that's something you need to, to fast and say, Lord, I refuse this unforgiveness in my life. And I'm not going to operate in it. And say, Lord, here it is. And during that time, then pray. And you'll see your faith, your sixth sense will take over. And it'll rule your other senses. But that's where we need to get into point four. We need to get to where our faith rules all senses. And we know what I'm talking about. We know where we're weak. And we need to get where our sixth sense, our faith rules all aspects of our life. And we do that by praying for wisdom. So what do you need from the Lord today? I can't smile very good, but, but what do you need from the Lord today? What do you need? Because he wants to touch your life. If you're not saved today, now's the time. If you're not saved today, now's the time. Because the Lord is looking for you. The Lord desires that all to be saved and come into understanding of him. He wants to know you. He's nudging you. The Holy Spirit's nudging you now. Maybe you're that prodigal son or daughter and just have gone astray and you got touched today and you, it's saying, Lord, I just need to refresh myself again. A lot of that going on lately. But what do you need from the Lord today? Because he wants to touch your life. Amen? So, Father, we thank you for this group today. And, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit continues to, to pull at us, Lord. And, Father, we ask that we get up and stand up and pray to you today, Lord. The title of the sermon is Stand Up. Father, standing up may be coming to these altars and giving up. But, Father, we stand up for you today. And we ask that you just pull in around us and move across us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to come to these altars today. If God and the Holy Spirit's touching your heart, come to these altars now. Praise team. Don't wait around, man. Things can turn fast. You may think you have all the time in the world. It can turn on you that quick. Are you ready to see Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus to touch your heart? Come. 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 Come to me, all who are heavy laden or weary and heavy, heavy laden. I'll give you rest today. Come. Shameful sin placed on him, the hope of every man. For the blood of Jesus washes me. For the blood of Jesus shed for me. What a the blood, it is my victory. Savior, Son, Holy One, slain so I can live. Oh, see the Lamb, the
Christ the blood, it is my victory. Oh, what love, no greater love, grace how can it be that in my sin Yes, even then he shed his blood for me. For the blood of Jesus washes me. For the blood of Jesus shed for me. What a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood. Sing it out to him today. Sing it out to him. This is the passionate part here. Let him have it today. All your love and your emotions and everything. Sing it to him today. Lord, you are my king. Lord, you are my king. 
You reign over my life and everything, Lord. You are my king. Hallelujah. Then you begin to praise his name because he is my king, my Lord, my Savior over all things. You are my king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give it to him today. All of it. Just say, here I am. You are my king. close today. I want everybody to bow your head and close your eyes, please. Lord, put on my heart that there's at least one person in here, if not two, that need to give their Lord their life back to the Lord, if not first time salvation. He's working on you by his spirit today. And he showed me, and that's okay. I'm going to be praying for you. But why not give in and yield to it today and say, Lord, I give my life to you completely today. Just slip your hand up. I will not call you out. If that's you today, slip your hand up. I want to give you that opportunity today. I just need to come home. Just need to give it all to my king. Just need to give it all to my king. Just need to give it all to him. Joe. So as we get ready to leave today, my heart was heavy with what's everything's going on as we pray for Pastor Kent and, and his family and, and Pastor Larry and, and Miss Doris. And I was thinking about them and, and as Pastor Kent was telling about Pastor Mark being with the Lord today, you know, we can celebrate that. That's a good thing. He, he is living out right now what we are still believing and hoping for. We can celebrate that. But as I was uh, praising I, I, what Pastor Kent started with, how he longed for uh, Joshua, his son, and Amy, his daughter, to hear from them, I patted on my chest and I was reminded of what's in my pocket. I got little smarties here. And I was reminded of my son, Asher, who we were potty training, and he got a reward today because he went potty. And I was so excited to give this reward to him because he did good and how he came and told me how he did good. And I thought, you know, be like a little child. My faith needs to be little, like a little child. And it, it hit me. And little things speak to us in different ways. It could be a smarty today in my pocket. But I am so excited when my son comes running to me. We were at Stockton all week with the youth, you know. And when I came home, both my boys came running. I missed you, Daddy. I missed you. That's what God, when we come running to God, going, I missed you, Father God. I missed you. When we pray and we seek his voice, how excited is he? And so whoever that was, I'm sure Pastor Kent hears from the Lord. I am confident in that. So if there's somebody today that, that maybe that was you and you just didn't know it, I encourage you to seek someone out. And that might be for every one of us today. Every one of us that heard this message, or maybe is going to hear this message in the future, it could be for you. So let's not miss the opportunity. As we know, 
This life on earth is temporary. But how exciting is it that we get the opportunity today to choose where we spend eternity? So I say let's, let's take today and let today be the day forever that we pray to our Father God. We pray earnestly for others. We passionately seek out those that we know are lost. Just like Pastor Kent's dog. If you don't know, he's, he's, that, that dog follows him. That's how I know if Pastor Kent's here. If, if I see his dogs go by my window downstairs, I know Pastor Kent's probably close. Because they find him. We need to, not, we're not dogs, I'm not saying that. But we need, we need to have that passion to seek the Lord. And so let's pray today. Father God, I thank you for your love, that your amazing love. Thank you, Jesus, our King. Thank you for being here today. I ask that you be with us as we get ready to, to end this service and, and we go out from here. Let us uh, remember the words that you spoke through Pastor Kent today. Help us to be able to put them into practice in our lives. Help us not just check the box today, but let it change us. Father God, I ask for boldness in this congregation so that we can be the mountain movers you've called us to be as we leave here and we go out into the community wherever we're going to go. I know everyone that heard this message today, it was for us, and there was a reason we heard it. And I thank you for that. I praise you, Father God. We lift up the Garfield family right now. Give them that comfort that can only come from you, that supernatural comfort. Give them that peace that surpasses understanding that, that we don't get. But you do. And you're the one who provides it. And so we thank you for that. As we go today, I ask that you be with us. Help us to be able to uh, be your servants wherever we go today. Help us to be your shining light today as we go build your church. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you don't know somebody, get to know somebody.